Okay, so now let's look at fluorescence. This may sound like a divergence from talking about Raman spectroscopy, but as you shall see, first of all, there's a similarity to it, and second of all, because of some of the properties of fluorescence, it's one of the top interferences in Raman spectroscopy, and the way you get around it has to do with understanding how it happens. Now, earlier I pointed out the vibrational energy levels, and I drew V equals 1, V equals 0, 1, 2. What we're now going to look at is something just a little bit more complicated. We're going to look at, this is energy going up here, E, and this is going to be the ground electronic state, the ground electronic state of the molecule. Now, why is it shaped like this? It's shaped like this because as a molecule, and this we're going to kind of assume diatomics here, as the diatomic pushes together, and what's being plotted along this axis is going to be R, or the, the distance, the bond distance, and this point right here is going to be called R sub E, the equilibrium bond distance. So R is changing back and forth along this axis. As that bond length gets shorter and shorter, the, the atoms don't like being pushed together, so the energy skyrockets. As you pull them apart, going this way, eventually the bond snaps, and you get the thing flattening out, and the energy level just flattens out. So that's a ground electronic state, and within that ground electronic state, there are going to be vibrational energy states. Okay. Now, there's going to be other electronic energy levels, so here we're going to have a higher energy level, E equals 1 a first electronic state. So this is an excited electronic state. And in there, there are also going to be energy levels. Now, an electronic excitation is something UV Viz does all the time. That's what it's doing. You're putting in enough energy that you're causing the molecule to actually undergo an electronic transition. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our source, whatever it may be, and we're going to strike the molecule with the energy, and it's actually going to go up and cause an absorption of an electronic energy. Remember, we're talking fluorescence here. Now, I've drawn it from the center of this to the edge of this. There's a good reason for that. I'm not going to go into wave functions or anything like that. It has to do with something called the Frank-Condon principle and a Frank-Condon factor, which causes this to go to the edge. But what happens is the molecule absorbs this photon and then immediately bursts into vibrational excitation. It begins to vibrate, and as it does, it kind of falls down inside this energy level until it reaches the ground vibrational state in this excited electronic state. And then from there, it will emit a photon of light, again going to the edge for the same reason as before, the Frank Condon factors, and then it will fall down inside that. But this right here is going to be the fluorescence emitted photon. So just to recap briefly again, electronic energy level ground, first excited state, the photon from our source causes it to be excited, it then kind of rolls down these vibrational levels and then emits. Two very critical facts about fluorescence. One is, it looks, in many ways, similar to what we drew for Raman. Remember, we had the photon go up. In that case, it went to a virtual state. Here, it's going to a real state. But this emitted photon has some similarities to the Raman photon. But the other key point here is the efficiency of fluorescence can be very, very high. What that means is, if the molecule has an energy level, listen to that again, if the molecule has an energy level that can absorb that photon, then it will preferentially do that. It will absorb that photon and then fall down via fluorescence. And this efficiency can be enormously high. One out of 100 photons or one out of 10. When we were looking at the Raman, remember it went to a virtual state. That is one out of 10 to the fourth, 10 to the eighth photons. So you need a lot of photons. It's very inefficient. Fluorescence is very efficient. That's the problem. 
If a molecule can fluoresce, it will. And if it fluoresces, that's going to be a lot stronger than the Raman signal. So the question becomes now, if in the presence of fluorescence, in the presence of a molecule that is highly colored, if that molecule is highly colored, then it's going to absorb. You try taking the Raman spectrum of fluorescein with a 532 ex excitation laser and fluorescein is going to eat you because the fluorescein is just going to glow. It's going to fill the whole room with fluorescence. You're not going to see the Raman. So how do you go about getting the spectrum of that molecule? How do you go about getting the spectrum of molecules that fluoresce? The Raman spectrum, that is. The fluorescence people would say Raman's a problem because they see Raman bands and they don't want to. But in the Raman system, if the molecule fluoresces, we have to figure out one of several ways to get around it. Now, there are several things we can do. We'll talk about those as we, as we go on. But just to kind of give you a preview, one thing you can do is try and burn out the electric level. The, the electronic transition. You hit it with enough photons that you bleach it. It's called photo bleaching. You bleach out the electronic excitation. That obviously comes with some risk. It also comes with some, the probability that you're changing the molecule as you do this. Okay, what we'll see is there are other sneaky ways to get around fluorescence, and that's what we'll begin to look at in the next couple of videos.